my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. It's time for my August DBR, so today I'm going to be going through the books that I plan on reading in August. I have a lot of ARCs to read in August, and in the past I've done something called ARC August, which is when you kind of go through all your ARCs for the upcoming fall months, and that's kind of what I'm going to be doing this month because I do have a ton. And then besides that, I have just like one backlist book that I want to read and then a bunch of Kindle Unlimited Romances. So I'm going to start with the Kindle Unlimited Romances and then uh, go from there. So actually, these first two are not Kindle Unlimited Romances. They are paperbacks that I have, um, and these are Tessa Bailey's Hot and Hammered series. This is the second and the third one. I love Tessa Bailey. I just read It Happened One Summer, which is her new release, and I adored it so so much and i have read fixer up by her like two years ago which is the first in the series so i'm going to be reading the second two in the series because i really love the first one and i want to continue on with it the premise of this series is that there is a construction company on long island which is where i'm from and each story focuses around a couple that has to do with this construction company. This one follows Rosie and Dominic Vega, and Dominic works for the construction company. And they were high school sweethearts and madly in love, and they are going through a bit of a rough patch in their marriage because Dom is just so like rough and stoic, and Rosie really feels like he is so distant and not the man that she fell in love with 10 years ago. What they decide to do is they decide to go to a marriage boot camp. From there, they work on repairing their relationship. And I've never actually read A Second Chance marriage relationship so i'm excited to read a novel that is like this then next we have tools of engagement which follows bethany who is the sister of georgie who is the main character in the first novel in the series and she's basically like so organized and has everything prim and proper and she works with this construction company with her family flipping house and she is the interior designer. She's on a dating hiatus and she decides to do something that she's always dreamed about which is flip a house completely on her own without the help of anyone else in her family except her older brother runs the company and won't let her do that. So a TV producer gets wind of this is happening and they decide to do a reality competition between the two siblings. One of the crew members is named Wes Daniels who gets under Bethany's skin from day one. And so as the race to renovate heats up, Wes and Bethany are forced into close quarters with one another and you can see where things go from there. These are just like always such fun rom-coms and they Tessa Bailey I think tends to write a lot steamier than like a typical rom-com would which I appreciate. So it's like the best of both worlds like a super steamy smut book and a rom-com all in one. Now on to all the lovely books I'm going to read on my Kindle this month. I'm obsessed with reading on my Kindle. I love it and I'm I've been driving in to work lately because of um, my job hasn't been wanting me to take public transportation for COVID reasons but that restriction is lifting next month so I'll be back on the train and I'll be able to read my Kindle or listen to an audiobook every morning and afternoon so I'm really excited to kind of like be reading more Kindle books that way. So what will I be tackling? Um, Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. Yeah, there's gonna be a video coming on my channel probably next week where I read the first four but I thought I was gonna read the first four for that video and then stop but I've kept going and now I'm like well there's 36 books in total maybe I should just commit to it don't don't comment maybe comment but like I know and if you don't know Ice Planet Barbarians is like a TikTok sensation and I decided to read it just to check out like the hyped books on TikTok and I'm like mm, I can see why and you can watch my vlog that comes out next week for my reactions and I think it's quite a funny vlog maybe some of my best work I don't know and you can kind of see like maybe what the hype is all about but for a brief synopsis there are these girls and they are kidnapped by aliens and they're on the spaceship the beginning is just it's something <laughs> I don't know like the spaceship runs out of like fuel so they crash land on this planet called not Hoth and there there are these like big seven foot blue aliens and one of the girls is like out exploring and she sees this alien and this alien resonates to her which basically means that they are mates so it's like a faded mate series and like the aliens if they have a mate they're just like so caring and kind and it's just basically like a planet of giant blue himbos with smut and somewhat of a storyline so you know what i've been enjoying it no shame in my game I don't even know how many of these books I'm going to put on my TBR, probably as many as I just get through, but I've been reading them and enjoying them. <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds, it's kind of fun. So then, of course, I'm going to put these two books on here because 
why haven't I read them yet? And it's the final two books in the Wicked Villain series. These have been on my TBR as like recurring, but this is a series by Katie Robert who I adore. I'm gonna try and work my way through most of her books because I just love them. And if you don't know, she's writing fantasy romance right now. I'm so excited about it. This is the series where it basically like is romances focusing on the Disney villains and the central plot point is this BDSM club that Hades runs. And so Sea Witch is between Ursa who is a territory leader in the city. She basically reaches out to Zuri who actually lives in Olympus where Neon Gods takes place and says that she can help her get back Alaric, who is her lost love. However, like Alaric has been kept captive by Ursa and it's a romance between the three of them. Katie Robert always writes really good menages, so excited to see how this one goes. And then we have Queen Takes Rose, which is the, I think it's gonna be the first one I read from her that is exclusively female-female because usually there's like more than two people in the mix. Um, and for this one, Aurora has been working at this BDSM club for like ever and it's the last two weeks of her contract and Malone has booked the last two weeks of her contract and things go from there. And all these characters are characters that you like see throughout the other novels as well. It's really fun and then I'll probably also read the Wicked short story collection after I finish because obviously you gotta read the short stories for the happy ever afters. The next Kindle book that I'll be reading is Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas and i've heard so much about this it's definitely blowing up on tiktok because i have seen it in barnes and noble on like the book talk like table and i have read credence by, Penel by penelope douglas like a year ago i didn't like it so i'm interested to see if i like this one and this is about two people that they have been pen pals for forever and they like truly really care about one another um through these letters and then the boy moves to the school and they actually don't get along in real life one of them knows like the other's true identity but the other one is in the dark and it's kind of like them coming together through all this and apparently it's just supposed to be like so good and amazing and just like this beautiful romance and then for nothing but good things so i definitely want to get on the hype train and hopefully enjoy this penelope douglas book so that i can maybe read her other works and also enjoy them Next up is Scars by Dana Isley, and I've heard about this book from the author herself on TikTok. And so this is actually a reverse harem book, and it's Malfia. So this woman, her family has hired someone to kill her. One day she was the sole inheritor of her family's fortune, and the next day she was diving out the window trying to escape the person that was trying to assassinate her. And she has been living on the run for years successfully until the triad has come for her. And they are dangerous, wealthy, and corrupt, and they think that she is the key for getting her family out of the way. And so the plan is to exchange her for a truce, and so she has to convince them to keep her. Mm. So, very interesting. I've heard it's been compared to Dead of Vipers, which is another TikTok book that is very popular that I may get to one day. Um, so interested to see how this goes and I really do want to start reading some more mafia romances which speaking of mafia romances my next book is Ivan by Sophie Lark which is a mafia romance this woman sneaks into Ivan's room and tries to kill him with a syringe full of poison and now she is his prisoner and she refuses to tell him who sent her and why this description is read to you Ivan is a dark and dominating mafia romance book one in the underworld series it's a standalone novel full of intrigue danger and sexy bedroom scenes Okay, sign me up. Sophie Lark is another author I've been seeing all over like social media, so I really wanted to give her a try. And the last romance I have on my TBR, which sometimes it's hard for me to put like a bunch of romances on my TBR because I'll start one series and then I'll just binge the whole series if it's a romance because I love doing that. So we'll see. But this one is The Marriage Contract by Katie Robert and this is her O'Malley series and I want to read this because the sequel series comes out in September, so. I obviously have to be prepared for that. Tigo Malley pretty much hates everything that has to do with his family. When his father orders him to marry Kalista, Sheridan to create a business alliance, Tigo wants nothing to do with her. However, when he meets her and sees the bruises on her neck, he decides that he will do everything in his power to protect her. So, I always love like the, I would do anything to protect you trope, like, yes. And obviously, I'm just in a mafia kind of mood, I don't know. So those are the romances that I plan to get to in August. Now let's get on to the arcs and then we'll get to the one backlist book that I'll be reading. So first we have The Splendor by Brina Shields and this is from Page Street Publishing and this is like about a hotel which I just love hotel settings they're just so cool and it says when the, within the enchanted walls of the Hotel Splendor lies the truth that Juliet is desperate to find. One thing I will say about Page Street arcs is that like 
the material they put them on is like so nice so when Juliet's sister Claire returns from a magical weekend on a mysterious hotel up on a hill she comes back changed and her love for her sister is completely gone deeply unsettled Juliet decides to go and check out the hotel for herself and she books a weekend there it's run by a talented young illusionist Henry and its halls are full of magnificent delights and alluring distractions. Even as Henry reveals the truth behind the illusions, Juliet is unsure who she can trust in this palace of lies. The splendor promised Juliet her dreams, but the longer she stays, the more it seems like a nightmare. Okay, this seems so cool and twisted and like, yes. Next, we have To Break a Covenant by Allison Ames, and this is a mystery thriller. It's a supernatural thriller. After a mining explosion, coated moon basin in ash, uh, the town's residents all moved just outside the uninhabitable zone and set up a new settlement in the mine's shadow. And now they rely on the tourism that it gets from its haunted reputation in order to survive. However, there may be more truth to the rumors than meets the eye. Lifelong new Basin residents, Clem and Nina form a perfect loop best friends forever, maybe more, and they open their circle up for Lizzie, an otherworldly girl with a knack for training crows, and Piper whose dad has been contracted to stabilize the mine. As Piper's dad works more and more in the mine, the more erratic and strange his behavior becomes. So the friends team up to try and break the mysterious hold that the mine has on him. But the only way to do that is to enter the mine themselves. Ooh. Next is How We Fall Apart by Katie Shaw, And I'll be reading this one like pretty early on in the month because it comes out on this week when this video is airing. Um, so it's a YA thriller that is Crazy Rich Asians meets One of Us is Lying. So Nancy Luo is shocked when her former best friend goes missing and is then found dead. And Nancy's even more shocked when the world starts spreading rumors that she and her friends are responsible. Thanks to an anonymous person called the Proctor who is implicating them in the crime online. Four of them must uncover the true killer before the Proctor releases even more dark secrets about them and cost them more than they can afford. Yes, dark academia, love it. Next is Forest Born by Elaine Audrey Becker and this is about like a haunted forest. Also look at the chapter headings. They're so pretty. So Aurora is a shapeshifter who has been born of the forest and she swore to never return to it. But when Prince Finley, her best friend, is struck with a magical illness, she must go into the forest to find a cure for him. And she will confront her past to secure his only hope. Ooh, magical forest. And I'm so excited about this one. Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer. I love the Curse of Dark and Lonely series, and this is her new fantasy series. And it is thick, but I... Yes, the description just says like everything that I want in a book. So the kingdom of Kandala is divided by a terrible sickness that is running through. King Harrison was thrust into power after his parent's untimely death and his brother now serves as the king's justice. And they have learned to react mercilessly to any sign of rebellion. And it's the only way to maintain order when the sickness can strike anywhere, for which the only remedy is an elixir made from delicate moonflower petals. Out in the wild, apothecary apprentice Tessa is tired of seeing her neighbors die and their needs being ignored essentially. So every night her and her best friend Wes sneak out to find these moonflower petals. As these problems continue to ravage the kingdom, a particularly cruel act from the king's justice makes Tessa decide to act and she goes to the capital in order to confront the king and his brother. And she is going to sneak into the castle. But what she finds when she gets there makes her wonder if it's even worth saving the kingdom. Yes, I also need to read A Vow So Bold and Deadly should I put that on my TBR? Because I have it on my Kindle for my library. Maybe I should. Because I do want to read it. Which that is the last book in the Curse of Dark and Lonely series. Which is like when this girl goes from regular Washington DC and is transported into this other world. Where she meets Prince Red and basically he needs her help in breaking his curse. Because as every year he transforms into a beast at the end of autumn. Yes. It's a very fun series and it gets like more expansive like past the Beauty and the Beast retelling like, as you go along so I really am excited to see what happens in the third book because we're bringing together all four characters because the first book followed two characters, the second book followed another two characters. So yeah, I think I'll just add that to my TBR because I do have it from the library. I might as well read it, you know? You know? Okay. That's on my TBR now too, I guess. Which brings me to my last book, which is The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. I decided to pick this up because it's one of Maddie's favorite books. And Rebecca Ross has a new book coming out in the fall called Dreams Lie Beneath. And the cover is just drawing me in. Like I'm so drawn to it that I need to read it. 
and so I was like, what if I just read her other works first and fall in love with this author? So that is what I'm doing. So I have the Queen's Rising here and it's really cool. So in this land, there are five passions that you can specialize in, which is either wit, dramatics, art, music, or knowledge. So when her 17th solstice comes along, Brina desperately wants to master her passion and be chosen by a patron. But then the impossible happens and she is not picked by any patron. And this basically means that she is inept. Months later, her life takes an unexpected turn when she is offered patronage by a disgraced lord. Suspicious of his intent, she reluctantly agrees, but there is much more to his motives than he is letting on. For there is a dangerous plot to overthrow the kingdom of Maivana, the rival kingdom of Valenia, and restore the rightful queen and her magic to the throne. With war brewing, Brianna must decide who she is more loyal to, her passion or her blood. It's just so cool and like so far from what I've seen it's very different and imaginative and that's what Maddie says that she like really loves it because it's so unique and so I cannot wait to read this. After I finish filming this I'm going to go to the beach and read it on the beach so I'm very excited. So that is my August TBR. Please let me know down below in the comments what you are planning on reading in August and until the next time have someone read some books and look at you guys in the next one. <laughs>